2024 is really shaping up to be a year of branching out for me. I've already done like a horror manga taste test earlier this year and I'll link that in case you want to check it out. I'm working on a second episode of that so that will be coming hopefully sometime in the not so far future. I have a list of books I just need to like get my hands on them but I'm really enjoying lately just trying to read things that aren't my usual science fiction and fantasy. I still love science fiction and fantasy but I just I mean really enjoy kind of branching out from that and having more variety in my reading. So one of the things I've been really wanting to do, especially in the last few weeks, is read more nonfiction. I used to read a lot of like history of law, history of forensics, uh, true crime kinds of nonfiction when I was in high school. And then I don't know what exactly caused me to stop doing that, but I just kind of dropped off on that genre entirely. I stopped reading them and I haven't really gotten back to nonfiction since then. I've read like, you know, one or two here and there. But I really enjoy nonfiction, and for whatever reason in the last few weeks, I've just been feeling really drawn to read more nonfiction. I have quite a few books on my shelves that I was excited about, but also I've been hearing about so many new nonfiction books that um, on just like a variety of topics that I know almost nothing about that I've been adding to my like various wish lists and, and my like want to read list on Goodreads. And I'm just really in the mood to read some nonfiction. I don't know what it is, but I kind of want to roll with that. So this video is basically going to be taking a look at what's kind of my highest priority right now, the things that are currently on my radar and the things that I am most excited to read. It's not going to be a TBR exactly because I'm not going to say like I'm going to read these in X amount of time. I know that that's just not going to work with my life and schedule right now, but all of these just sound so good to me that I wanted to collect them in one place, tell you guys about them in case you're interested in them as well, and also remind myself of the ones that I kind of want to try and get to whenever I have a little bit of time to do some nonfiction reading. So I would recommend go ahead and grab a drink. I have some tea here, maybe grab a snack because we have quite a stack of books to get through. I have a big old stack here from my shelves and I have several more that are uh, ones that I'm hoping to get my hands on at some point in the future. Before we get started on this stack, I did just want to say that there's a couple of books I won't be mentioning that I've talked about in TBRs recently, either in priority TBRs or monthly TBRs. So I'm not going to be talking about like Written in Bone by Sue Black or Hood Feminism by Mickey Kindle, just because I have highlighted those recently. And I really wanted to focus on highlighting books that I have not talked about recently or if at all. Um, so that was kind of the thinking behind the particular list that I put together. Also, because we have so many to go through, I'm going to try and keep it brief and just give you a little description of the topic and maybe a brief note on like why I picked this particular book up or where I got the recommendation from so that we're not here all day because I have, I think it was 20 or close to 20 books to talk about. So first up, I have A Fatal Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum by Emma Southern. This one I picked up on the recommendation of Michael Kist over on TikTok. He's a creator who reads a lot of history books. And he recommended this one in a review fairly recently. He, I think this was the second book he'd read from this author. And he talked a lot about how much he liked her writing. And he read an excerpt from the introduction that really piqued my interest. It sounded really good. And this one is just about how Roman society dealt with murder. How did they think about it? How was it written in their laws? But also how did people deal with it on like a practical level? How did they think about it? beyond kind of the legal aspect of it. So I think it sounds like it's going to be really interesting and there's like several different lenses that it looks at. There's like murder in the family, murder in the slave state, murder by magic, just kind of different varieties of murder that it talks about and I think it's going to be a really like comprehensive but I suspect fairly concise because it's not that long of a book uh, look at murder in Roman society and I like that it's a blend of something I'm already kind of interested in which is just like history of law aspect but also something I don't know a lot about, which is Roman history. So I'm really interested in diving into this one and seeing how I feel about it. Next up, I have All That Is Wicked by Kate Winkler Dawson, which is about a specific criminal, Edward Roloff, and the efforts to stay his execution because people wanted to study him. He was deemed too intelligent to be killed. So there were all these different people from different fields who wanted to study him, figure out how his mind worked, figure out like how he got to the point he was at where he was like committing these really horrific crimes, how he got caught, all those things and it just sounds like it's gonna be super interesting it sounds like it's kind of an early look or a look at early forensic psychology which is a topic i'm really interested in i actually wanted to get involved in the field of forensic psychology back when i started my undergraduate degree that was why i studied the things that i studied then and it's still a topic that i think is so fascinating and i'm very excited for this one this was also gifted to me by my mom for christmas so like shout out to my mom this was a really awesome gift to get and i'm really interested in finding out more about this particular like this particular person and the things that people 
found out through studying him just because I don't know a lot about Edward Roloff and actually I think I had only like vaguely heard of him prior to this book um, but I have another book by the same author on my shelves and I think this is the one I want to start with just because it does have that like forensic psychology aspect to it. Last kind of history of crime, true crime book I have here is American Demon by Daniel Stashower, which is about Elliot Ness and the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run. Elliot Ness was a, I don't remember what his position was originally, but he was involved in the capture of Al Capone and then became the public safety director in Cleveland during the period in the 1930s when the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run was active. And so he was also very involved in capturing this particular serial killer. And I'm interested to learn more about Elliot Ness because I just don't don't know that much about him. And I also don't know much about the Mad Butcher of K Kingsbury Run. I don't know a lot in general about kind of 1930s America. So I'm really interested in the kind of historical aspect of this as well. Next up, I have a book by an author I've read from before. This is The Poison Squad by Deborah Bloom. And this is on my list because I've read from her before. So I previously read The Poisoner's Handbook from the same author. And I just loved that book so much. It is so interesting. That one is about the... Uh, beginnings of the medical examiner's office in New York City and it's just fascinating it looks at the like kind of development of the office over uh, kind of prohibition and in, into the Great Depression and I thoroughly enjoyed it I read it entirely on a drive to visit family it's kind of a 9 to 11 hour drive from where I live to visit my aunt and uncle what we were going to see and I had actually borrowed the book from my uncle a few months prior and I wanted to read it so I could give it back to him and I read it in the car during that drive and I was hooked the entire time. Her writing is just so engaging and um, I felt like her exploration of the topic was really comprehensive. So I'm very excited to dive into this one as well. This one is not as like forensics focused, but it's about the kind of early efforts to have uh, regulations put on food production in the US. And this group of people who was like actively poisoning themselves so that they could record the effects and prove that there were, you know, dangerous things making it into the food sources in the US. So I think it's going to be super interesting and also probably kind of difficult to read because I'm, I'm sure there's lots of people who got very ill doing this kind of experiment. But I think it's uh, going to be a really interesting topic, especially because it's one that I just I know nothing about kind of the early creation of I think it's the USDA. No, it wasn't the creation of the USDA, but he, the guy that was kind of the leader of this group was the chief chemist of the USDA. And I think this kind of led to the creation of like the FDA. Now for something totally different, I have Nightmare Fuel, the Science of Horror Films by Nina Nesseth. I actually pre-ordered this book and I did it completely on a whim. I'm a fairly recent uh, fan of horror films and especially horror video games. So I know this is about film, but I suspect some of the conclusions here probably would cross over into that realm as well. But this is all about like the neuroscience and psychology behind why we love horror films and how we react to them. So I think it sounds like it's going to be super interesting and it kind of combines my pre-existing interest in psychology with my newfound love of horror content. So I think this one just sounds like so much fun and I cannot wait to dive into it and frankly it's a shame that I have not read it yet because I did pre-order it um, but I'm, I'm hopeful this might be one I could like maybe read over the summer because I think I'm gonna have like some time then it'll be great. These next two are both books that I started for various projects or various reasons and have not gotten a chance to get back to. First one is The Southern Hospitality Myth by Anthony Seschel. I started this one for a project for my first semester of my graduate program. I was writing a paper about Southern hospitality in a novel that we had read that semester. And I read, I think like the introduction and the first chapter of this that were the most relevant for the argument that I was making. And I'd also read like a separate article from the same uh, writer. I never got a chance to actually go back and finish this, but I think it's really fascinating. It's an exploration of Southern hospitality and kind of the, um, the different realities of the South that the concept kind of elides, but also why does this particular concept kind of persist and why have we kind of clung to it as a way of thinking about the South. So it was a really interesting book and I really have been wanting to go back to it. I just haven't had the time. Um, and similarly, we had a book that I read in one of my undergraduate classes. We read like the first chapter and it was by the professor of that class. Um, so we were reading an excerpt of it and I really was interested in the excerpt. So I went and bought it. And then I was reading this right when the COVID pandemic was beginning. And so I put it down because I really stopped reading anything, but I especially didn't want to read this. Um, and I haven't ever gotten back to it. So I feel like I need to do that now. But this is Punishing Disease. 
HIV and the Criminalization of Sickness by Trevor Hopp. And this, it's just, I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's about HIV and this use of the legal system and criminal law to deal with that rather than thinking of it as like a public health issue. So I think it's really interesting and I remember just being fascinated by the first chapter of this. I thought that the argument he was making in this book was really compelling based on that first chapter and I just need to get back to it now because I, I definitely put this down because the pandemic was happening and I was like I can't I can't be thinking about this right now. The next two books here are both ones that my best friend recommended to me that she read over the course of her graduate experience. She recently had finished her master's degree in geography and she ended up recommending both of these to me as ones that she particularly liked that she read while she was doing that degree. Uh, so the first one is Underland by Robert McFarland, which is all about the things that are under the land. It's about caves, but it's also uh, subtitled A Deep Time Journey. And she said that this one gave her an existential crisis. So that sounds fantastic. And I'm looking forward to reading it just because it's so far away from other types of nonfiction I've read and I know so little about this kind of topic. Uh, but it just sounds really interesting. It's kind of looking at like geologic time and like caves, but also other things under the ground. And I just think it sounds like it's going to be super fascinating. And she really enjoyed this one and kind of raved about it for a while after she read it. The other one that she recommended me was Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake, which is all about fungi. And I think that sounds super interesting. The other reason I want to read this though is that it inspired a book by one of my favorite authors. Um, Nicholas Kaufman wrote, what is the title of the book? The Hungry Earth after reading this. It kind of inspired that. It's a medical thriller. I know this is probably going to freak me out a little bit, but I kind of want to read this both because my friend loved it, but also because I want to read The Hungry Earth. And I think it would be very interesting to read this and The Hungry Earth kind of at the same time or around the same time and see kind of the, the inspirations for that book. The last one I have here off of my shelves is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado which my partner gifted to me. He read this and loved it and he said it's the best book he never wants to read again. I've seen so many people though talk about how fantastically written this is. It's a memoir detailing the author's experience of being in an abusive relationship with another woman and it just sounds like it's going to be really harrowing but also really fascinating and I've heard that the writing is beautiful and that the framing device where she's kind of talking about the dream house and like different using different horror tropes to kind of structure each chapter. I've heard that that's just really well done and I'm really interested to read this. Again, I know it's going to be very harrowing and I think that's kind of why I haven't gotten to it yet is I'm a little bit scared, but I do really want to try and read this sometime soon because I know so many people have just loved the way that this is written. Moving on to the books that are not currently on my shelf. We're kind of moving back to one book that I have started previously and never got to finish. So this one is The Murder Room by, I think it's Michael Capuzzo. This one is about a group of people who, it's, it's actually like a, not quite a secret society, but there's this like group called the Vidoc Society who are a group of different criminal justice experts from a variety of different fields who get together periodically and try to offer advice on or solve cold cases. And the group was started by these three men who I think are a forensic psychologist, a forensic artist, and I can't remember the last guy's profession, but they were all like friends and they ended up starting this group after they themselves had kind of like worked together on a few of these different like cold cases and been involved in clearing of old cold cases. And I remember this just being like a fascinating read, especially looking at kind of the histories of those three men and how they got to the different fields that they were in, but also the cases that kind of made them well known in the criminal justice system and then how that led to the formation of the Vidoc Society. And I just think it sounds super interesting. I remember really enjoying the part of it that I read and then this was when I was reading in high school and I just did not get time to finish it. it I had to turn it back into the library before I could finish it and I've just never gotten my hands on a copy of it since then so I really want to get back to this one because I would love to know the rest of that story. The next four are all books that I found out about kind of in the course of working on my master's degree. They're all English or English related. Um, so the first one I wanted to mention is A Year in the Life of William Shakespeare, 1599. This is by James Shapiro. And I, I've been taking some classes on Renaissance literature and found that I actually really like Renaissance drama, which I did not think I would like. But I ended up through those classes reading several different articles from James Shapiro. He is uh, a specialist in Shakespeare and also kind of early uh, modern literature. And I've always found his writing to be very compelling, and, but also clear and, and I never had trouble like un understanding what he's talking about. And so I found out he had this book and it's a look both at kind of what Shakespeare was writing during the year 1599 because four of his biggest plays came out during that 
year or he was working on them during that year but it's looking at both at that and at the like greater historical cultural social context that Shakespeare was writing in at the time so I just think it sounds super interesting and it's a very long book I think but it sounded like it would be just like a really intriguing look at that kind of period of history then I have one that actually was just mentioned recently which is The Life of Samuel Johnson and I think this was by John or James Boswell I can't remember the author's name exactly but this is itself a classic it came out in like the 1790s but it's a look at the writer Samuel Johnson I think it's supposed to be like one of the most comprehensive biographies of him ever written but this was about this author who was an abolitionist but I believe he was also disabled and struggled with what we would probably now classify as like depression and anxiety and it just sounds like he was a really interesting historical figure and our professor for the class I'm currently taking where we, we recently read one of Johnson's works uh, mentioned this particular biography and said that like it's massive but it's worth every single page because Johnson is such an interesting figure but also the like book itself is so well written and so I just kind of threw it onto my want to read list on a whim just because it's totally different from anything else I've read and I know basically nothing about Samuel Johnson outside of the little bits of like biographical detail we've talked about in class. The next book was recommended by one of my classmates in the other class I'm taking this semester because we were reading an article that talked a bit about witchcraft and like early witchcraft trials and how that was involved in like the formation of the legal system and things like that. Um, but we were talking about that and one of my classmates recommended The Devil in the Shape of a Woman. I have forgotten the author's name and I would have been very silly and not jotted it down but it will be on screen somewhere. Um, but this one is all about the uh, witchcraft trials specifically in New England in I think the Oh gosh, I don't remember what time period, um, but it's about the like New England witchcraft trials and it just sounded super interesting for that reason and is looking at like the kind of cultural context that that was happening in. Next I have one that I think is very different from a lot of the other books I've talked about so far, which is The Ghost in the Image. I've again forgotten this author's name. It will once again be on the screen somewhere, but this one is about like horror media and connections between reality and technology in like horror films and horror games and it just sounds so interesting to me because again I'm very interested in horror as a genre right now and it sounded like it was going to be a really cool exploration of how we like represent the occult in media. So I think it's going to be really cool and this one is one of the ones that I'm having more trouble finding because I think it's an academic text so those tend to be a little more expensive but I just think it sounds so interesting. Next up I have another like this one's just a pure history book. This was another one that was recommended by Michael Kist. This is Fifth Son by I think it's Camilla Townsend and this is a new history of the Aztecs. She basically went and looked at all of the documents that we have extant from the Aztecs and wrote a history that wasn't based in the like, the the conqueror story basically because a lot of the histories that we have um, of the Aztecs come from documents created by the Spanish conquerors who went in and, you know, decimated the population. And so this one is taking its information more from extant records we have from the Aztecs themself, themselves, I should say. Um, so I think it sounds super interesting. And this is again another period of history that I just don't know as much about as I would like. And I think this will be a really great place to start with exploring that piece of history. The very last one I want to talk about is I think the recommendation I got in the weirdest place but this is Cloven Country and this is all about like place names in England that are related to the devil and how those place names came to be and the kind of folklore around them. It just sounds like a super fun book but I actually saw this one on Tim Downey's TikTok which if you aren't familiar with the name Tim Downey he is the voice actor who voiced Gale in Baldur's Gate 3 and he has found his way to book talk and has been doing like little bookshelf tours of his uh, personal bookshelves and talking about the things he, he's been reading um, which is just so very Gale of him uh, but yeah he talked about this book in a recent video where he was talking about the books he had taken with him where he was um, I think filming on location somewhere and this particular book just really stuck out to me and sounded like it would be like a lot of fun. I was also reading A History of Fear at the time that I saw this recommendation so that probably influenced that decision a little bit as well. So those are all the nonfiction books that are kind of at the top of my radar at this point. I would definitely love to know if you've read any of these and what your thoughts were on them or if there are any other nonfiction recommendations that you have that you think I would benefit from picking up because I am definitely looking for more recommendations and I know as school is kind of tapering off my goal is to start picking up more nonfiction and kind of leaning that way with my reading for a little bit just to kind of branch out some more. So I think that's pretty much all I have for you today. 
and I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I hope you'll consider giving a like, maybe even subscribing to see what comes next. I'm currently posting on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.